about kind of sci-fi sort of horror? I don't know. Fun, really. Entertainment. That's how I looked at it. Like a kind of adult Disney, really. <laughs> There are certain things, you know, you just never forget, like the severed hand kind of moving of its own volition across the beach. I mean, what is that? And the torso with meat, which they got from the butcher that day. None of that really brings uh, into mind uh, a high colour of a film. You never set out to do, make a stinker. If it turns out that way, well, shucks, that's the brakes. Well, I tried to distance myself from the film as much as possible and tried not to read too much, but when you're walking to the um, deli and uh, the truth front page, you know, screams out, Philip Adams walks out on Linda. It's, it's an eye catcher, you know. <laughs> it did feel slightly unfair that I was to carry the burden of this grotesque read. Mm. Let's face it, it went so big in London, you know, and yet here we are in Australia saying, oh, we've never seen a show for two days here. For, you know, ridiculous. I, I don't think I've, I, no, I haven't, I've never seen it. Because it's never on. Audiences of today would be well served if they go in to watch the film with the brief that we might have been given, and that is that it, it is a black comedy. <laughs> Well, I think if you watch it in the right way, it'll probably give you a good laugh, actually. <laughs> I think they should go along and just be entertained by it. If you want to see one of the worst films ever made in this country, go for it. Get out your DVD and, and get your popcorn out. If you want to see something that's even remotely real or plausible or has any kind of depth to it, so do not watch this film. I think there are probably moments of uh, shock, horror, and also you think, God, what, what the hell did they think they were doing here, kind of thing. Old mayor used to say, you know, if you want a message, go to the telegraph office, you know. If you want to be entertained, come to the movie. But it's a cult now, which I suppose is just another word for bilious making or grotesque or any adjective that's not good. Cult. Yeah, yeah. It's turkey cheap. <laughs>
huge 1984 scene to sort of set up the repressive society that requires these re-education and behavior modification camps to um, discipline dissident youth. Disobedience is treason. Treason is a crime. Crime will be punished. It was a, yeah, a, a difficult situation. Uh, now, I could have stood on my creative dignity and walked away, but a lot of people you know, might have been out of a job. The whole thing might have collapsed in a heap. So I thought, OK, I'll do what I can and make an, an spectacular, fast-moving action thriller with no money to pay stuntmen to fall over. Um, and the first 15 pages torn out because uh, they were too expensive. A helicopter chase torn out, because, uh, four pages of it, um, because that was too expensive. <laughs> it, it was a mess. Anyway, I, I, my schedule was cut to 30 days. I got it done in 28 in order to uh, try and do something about the missing 1984 element, which I thought was uh, yeah, uh, rather important. We're on our way to a raid camp, aren't we? Yeah. They're going to make obedient little citizens out of us. Who are? What do you mean? Society. So I, you know, did what I could, and I think uh, some of it is pretty poor. <laughs> I look back on, you know, flagrant exploitation days, uh, and I think, oh dear, you know, I'm, I don't th think of myself as a, you know, a male chauvinist pig. Maybe we better take off our, our hot clothes. <laughs> but, there had to be nudity in the film. In fact, I got male and female nudity in the film. I'm an equal opportunity offender. Poor Libby. Naturally, she wasn't going to do any, any nude scenes, so we got uh, the best person we could find in Cannes, somewhat in generously endowed. But I think Gus Mercurio uh, had a good time. I mean, uh, um, he, <laughs> he enjoyed that scene. Come to me, my little flower. I thought that I would make a high camp splatter movie. With a lot of dark humor. satire of that particular uh, genre of exploitation movie, prison movies, uh, prison camp movies. Yes, you'll get on here very well, I'm sure. I'm going to make you feel like you've never felt before. But it was actually quite a successful film. Yes, I think your little um, turkey shoot will be well appreciated in the right quarters. It was uh, the highest grossing film in that month at the Warner West End 2 when it opened in a blizzard. There was a, a, a real you know, uh, cold snap in the UK at that stage. But they had uh, a clever distribution company, uh, Enterprise Pictures, John Hogarth. Uh, he created a poster which had Linda Stoner lying on the ground full of arrows, uh, Roger Ward with his foot on the body and an M16 in his hand standing there as a proud hunter, bald dome gleaming in the light, and the uh, turkey shoot, no film for chickens. Rated X, of course, after cut. <laughs> um, substantial cuts were made in it. Uh, uh, some people just, yeah, they didn't quite get the joke. <laughs> The little one, Alf. Please don't! Ah! Ugly little morsel, isn't it? <laughs> All right, Alf. Good. Tea break's over. We deliberately chose Thatcher as the name of the uh, prison commandant. I am Charles Thatcher, your campmaster. 
That name seemed to conjure up you know, supply-side economic theory and general repression of youth. We are all part of a great society, <coughs> one which is the product of many generations of thought. <coughs> While it is true that in the past mistakes have been made, <coughs> we now know that this society depends upon the wholehearted cooperation <coughs> of every one of its members. <coughs> no. There is no room for shirkers, malcontents, or deviants. And we are here to help you regain your rightful places in that great society. Freedom is obedience. Obedience is work. Work is life. I think this may have affected the attitude of the British public going to see it. They, they wanted to see a prison camp run by somebody called Thatcher. Thatcher! It went out in England uh, with a, also a, a clever way of getting publicity was to send turkey's feet to in a little box with an invitation to the press preview to all the London um, film critics. Unfortunately, there was a bit of a mail strike on at that time, and the turkey's feet was something like four or five days delayed in the mail, and there were some cinema critics that were not particularly impressed by a, an extremely high turkey's foot being unraveled on their desk, uh, uh, and they immediately rushed into print and fulminated about uh, this outrage and this disgraceful film, which they then went and saw and nominated all the disgraceful events that occurred in it, uh, which made the paying public think, ooh, I want to see that. Uh, and uh, so it was quite successful in England. Thank Christ, something's gone right. There is sometimes a confusion in people's minds between content and form. And now, I'm not always responsible for content. Um, I, I you know, sometimes make films that I develop myself. Uh, I'm responsible for their content. Other films I take on as uh, a jobbing film director. But when you examine the work of someone who is a jobbing film director, uh, you can fault him for poor storytelling, for lack of production value, for poor performances. <laughs> And indeed, all of that occurred in Turkey Shoot. Uh, but uh, the thing that outraged most, most people, I think, was the, the, the subject matter. The hunters and the hunted, the quick and the dead. Which really, in its way, was intended as a, as a joke. <laughs> Fucking bastards. I had people come up to me afterwards and say, how could you make this film? And I said, well, you know, I'm, I could have walked away, but I did my duty and, and made something that the producer could sell uh, overseas and recover the investor's money. And uh, I take the investor's money seriously.
It is 1995. Open season! Hunting is the national sport, and people are the prey. The world is ruled by a strict regime. They're going to make obedient little citizens out of us. Who are? Society. What do you mean? Let's Step out of line, and they take you to the funny farm. You could die laughing. All you have to do is lead my guests on a chase for one day. A little sport. You're going to kill us? Not necessarily. You might survive. Is everybody ready? Come on, you big piece of shit. You come to me. <laughs> I'm the one you can't break. I'm what you've been afraid of all your life. I'm afraid of nothing. You're afraid of failing. <gasps> and now, my little flower. Yes, I'm gonna taste your honey. But it's less the size of one's gun that counts. Or the skill with which it's used. Ah! Don't you kill him, Jennifer! He's my target! This is Thatcher. The hunt is over. Shoot on sight, shoot to kill. Let me come with you. No way. Please take me with you. Don't leave me here. and the hunted. The quick and the dead. Oh, shit! Oh. Who will survive the blood and thunder shocker of the year? <laughs>